Hello and welcome back to the channel. I am here in Oaxaca, Mexico, Mexico's food capital. And it's known as Mexico's food capital because of the unique, one-of-a-kind food that you can't find anywhere else. And I'm excited to share some of the foods that I find with you. We're gonna do fun dining and fine dining. By the end of my trip, Off and I together will have tried all of Oaxaca's seven different moles, plus a whole lot of other new things. I'll tell you which mole is for people who like to drink their coffee black, restaurants I recommend you visit, and one place I don't recommend, plus tips on how to bring mole home with you. This food comes from the rich culture that has existed in this region for thousands of years, really. It has so many different influences. I thought, what better place to start than at one of the biggest markets here in Oaxaca, Mercado Benito Juarez, and its neighboring market, El Mercado 20 de Noviembre. And if you're new here, hi, I'm Mark. My work contract recently ended, and right now I'm coming up with a concrete plan to travel the world. It's taking me a little while, but I'm getting there. If you'd like to see more about Oaxaca, I will have more videos coming down the pike and would love to have you along. Here we are, here we are at Mercado 20 de Noviembre, here in Oaxaca City. This is one of the biggest markets around. It's also the market that has the most restaurants in one area that you can just walk around and try all of the different cuisine that Oaxaca is known for. You can find your mole here, you can find your tlayuda, you can find your locally grown chocolate. All of the different foods that Oaxaca is known for can be found right here. Tlayuda is sometimes referred to as Mexican pizza. Have any ideas what you might eat? It has a tortilla crust and uses bean paste as a sauce. So this is sayuda, especial. There's a different type of meat and grasshopper. So little uh, cockroach, a oh, little no, grasshopper. grasshopper. Big difference. Some grasshopper, some avocado right. fanciness, and you know what? Let's put more meat in it for the culture. Protein. And then some cheese. together makes sense. So strange. There's the carnage. That's it. Yeah. This is chocolate. Bahanka chocolate. Sweet. Kind of sugar candy. A slight bitterness. Mm -hmm. Rico. Tea. Mm -hmm. Oaxaca is known for its chocolate, so we are trying this, um, a couple of chocolate drinks, the Champorado and the Chocolate de Leche. Le uh, le uh, Champorado. Hot. Hot. Chocolate de Leche. Gracias. What are you having? So I think this is the chocolate con leche. More or less, it's hot chocolate, but it's very good cinnamon, cinnamony chocolate. Lots of use of cinnamon here. Now we need to dip it. Is here? What does it taste like? Is it just chocolatey? Milky. Tea milky. And Extra ricey. milky. Yeah. And what? Ricey? Yeah. Interesting. Like it goes together with a bit of bread. And the bread is sweet a little bit. So I sweet on sweet on sweet on sweet. The Oaxaca style. Excess fuel. Azuka. <laughs> okay, I'm about to try the Champorado. So first, I'm going to sip it. They really give you like a whole bowl, so it's a little bit like having chocolate soup. Tejate is another popular chocolate drink in Oaxaca that has a long history. Verde is 
más de sí. Sí, sí. Me gusta. Dulce. Way back before the Spanish arrived in the 1500s, locals were drinking tejate. The chocolate you drink, and what is it again? Almond this? No, I think it's just water, honestly. Yeah, water and some. And cacao. Cacao, more than cacao. It must, it's almost like iced coffee with a hint of cacao. And it's very light. It's not exactly like hot chocolate or even like regular chocolate milk. It's different than that. It's like a, more subtle and the chocolate taste is a little bit different. It's really tasty actually. I'm not exactly sure how they um, produce this kind of foamy. It's almost like a cream on top of the, the liquid. Before moving on to El Mercado Benito Juarez, I wanted to check out one thing. You can see behind me a lot of smoke billowing. It, this is actually called El Pasillo de Carne, which is just a lot, a lot of grilled meat all in one place. It's just like a hallway and you walk through and there are little places to sit. Maybe before we leave, we'll be able to come back to this section and get some freshly cooked meat. El Mercado Benito Juarez is kind of different from Vente de Noviembre in that it's a bit more miscellaneous in nature. You can still find food products in the market, but fewer restaurants. You can find places though to get a drink or one of Oaxaca's famed nieves. Okay, we have over here. Three flavors. Beso Oaxaqueño, Beso de Angel. Crema de Mascal, Oaxaca Kiss, Kiss of Angel, and then Mascal Cream. And I've gotten tamarind, which I believe is at the bottom. Um, it's a like lighter beige color. And the other one's the pote negro, which I'm going to have to figure out, but it's something local. <laughs> Crema de Mascal. I can smell it. Mm, definitely Mascal. Interesting. If you want alcohol, flavor, ice cream, yeah. Beso, Oaxaca, Oaxaqueño. Now we talk about ice cream. Now we're talking. As it turns out, black sapote is a type of persimmon, a fruit that is local to Oaxaca. And it's delicious. And the zapote negro is a very strong flavor. And so, really, it kind of overpowers the tamarindo. You always have to think through these like flavor combinations, but sometimes it's hard when you're just like throwing a dart at the dartboard. When you are not exploring the city, Oaxaca has no shortage of good restaurants to dine at. On our trip, we made it our mission to try all seven types of moles, and we almost did, except for mole verde. Mole comes from an Aztec word that means sauce and has been in existence in some form for a very long time. Making mole is hard work. It can use anywhere from 30 to 50 ingredients and take hours to make. That's why it may be easier for travelers like us just to go out to eat. There's a little bit of sweetness to it, a little bit of bitterness to it. The first word that came to my mind is buttery. I don't know why, but it just has this um, smoothness to it that made me think of that for some reason. Black mole with chicken. How does it taste? It's a classic. Chicken, sweet, chocolatey. A little bit of a hint of like smokiness. You can have, you need to have this in Oaxaca. Sopa de marisco. Rich in seafood. A lot of seafood in there. So there's a good little piece of fish in there. 
I'm not sure how I'm going to handle the crab because we didn't get any clippers or anything, and I'm not that hardcore. But the shrimp is easy to eat, so. Eat it. Crack it open and use your teeth. Rip it open and suck it. And suck it. We're in Xochimilco now. It's just a beautiful, beautiful area with lots of art. And right now we're looking for the restaurant we're thinking about eating at, which is Ancestral. This is a lemonade with different types of herbs in it. And I'm not sure what herbs they've used, but it looks delicious and authentic. Yeah, it's going to be hard not to just drink that all up right now. So this pepper is stuffed with crab meat. The guy just came and put three drops of this chili liquid. I'm, I'm not sure if it's just a white mole, but um, we'll see what it tastes like in any event. Oh my god, it's such a unique flavor. Really, really sweet, actually. I'm trying to decide what this tastes like because I've definitely had the taste before, but I can't pinpoint it. Very refreshing, cool, crab, sweet, but not too sweet. It's delicious. Yeah. It's milky. It has a milky flavor to it. Uh huh. It's delicious. And yeah, the ingredient I couldn't figure out was pineapple. They brought our main courses, and so I have this pork belly, and this is a kind of mole called Monte Monteras, and it's supposed to have a lot of herbs in it as normal, but it's also supposed to have a fruity taste to it as well. But let's try it out. It's definitely crispy outside. So many different textures all at once. The outside of the pork belly is very crispy. Inside it's very soft. And the uh, sauce is very subtle. This is octopus with the red mole sauce. Mm. How's the mole? It's good. Chewy, nutty, and full. Very octopus. So I should be counting how many moles we've tried at this point, but we've tried a number of them. So this restaurant, El Escapulario, is like a very unassuming place. You could easily just walk by it on the street. It is an upstairs restaurant. Quiet, understated, but the food is on point. Really just amazing. It's the type of place that if I lived here, I would be coming over and over again because it is this kind of just very high quality home style type cooking. What are you eating there? Um, mole amarillo. So yellow or orange mole with beef. How is it? It's good. It is too sultry. It's very umami. What are you? I am having is chichilo which is also a type of mole and it's made up with a number of different spices. First, I'm just going to taste the sauce just to be simple. Yeah, it's a, a darker color, but it's definitely not anything like um, the traditional black mole. It's a whole other blend of spices entirely. We just got um, courtesy mezcal, which was really nice of them. From El Escapulio, it was so sweet. After our dinner, they offer us a free mezcal with some tahini and some lamb. Being a former drinker, I know exactly what to do. <laughs> you sweep this, first you put it on your face, you put it on your hand, get your lamb lady, get your shot. So you have this. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yep. Very good. And voila, the night is young. And what? <laughs> And what, and what is I your, need to go sleep. <laughs> and what is your expert opinion on the 
Mezcal. Delicious, but most importantly is the heart of this lady who will offer us. We don't even drink, but here we are. <laughs> we didn't just stay in the city when we visited Oaxaca. We actually did a road trip through the mountains to the coast. But before we left the city, we did make one more stop at the hallway of smoke for lunch. But it's like really It's up to you. It's in my eye already. Yeah. In all honesty, it didn't live up to its hype. At least not for us. Just a lot. Very chaotic energy. It was the one place that I felt like we went to that really felt ended up feeling like a tourist trap. Basically with that little area, you're negotiating with multiple vendors. You have the meat person, you have the salsa person, you have the drinks person. Somehow they're all coordinating, but then at the end of the day, the amount we were being charged just kept going up. You know, when we told them we weren't planning to have any drinks, it was suddenly like we were being whisked away to this random spot down at the other end of the Mercado, and they were going to seat us in this, it was almost ridiculous little corner. It was only because we were assertive and insisted that we go back, and we just said, you know, we would buy the drink that meant that we were going to have to sit far away from our food, and which would also mean we wouldn't have access to the salsa. Let me remind you that the salsa person is also a different vendor. So it was altogether crazy. This chorizo with some red pepper, it's okay. But then there were other places that would normally fly under the radar that did a better job. Touristy spots aren't always all they're cracked up to be. One of our favorite affordable places ended up being this taco joint, Tacos Roy. Tacos Roy routinely had lines of locals going outside the door. So it's like two al pastor, one bistec. Uh -huh. So else? I have two al pastor. And two bistec. Can I speak? Yes. So I have two al pastor, one bistec and one arachera. Ah. And this is the a la plancha taco, so it's on the grill. There's three team type taco. I'm getting one on the grill. Okay. And this sauce, get a go with it. Ooh, mm. spicy, spicy. It's always good to have a good Mexican staple. So nothing fancy with these tacos, but it is a good, reliable meal here in Mexico. Mole is incredibly time consuming to make and can require a lot of local ingredients. So many who visit Oaxaca think they can't have it until they go back to Oaxaca. But you can actually get mole paste to go. And it's easy to make once you have the paste. Yeah. This sweeter, doshe, and then this sweeter. Okay. Mm -hmm. What do you prefer? We get both. Go ahead. Yeah, we got three different types of mole. So first we get the corotido, and then we get mole negro, which is the classic, but it's the mole negro dolce, sweet, with almond paste. And then lastly is the specialty. is a version of mole rojo. It's a specialmente alemandro. So basically you have rojo in it. It's called Hon Hobi. So this one's most expensive, 200 and you try it, you like it. So these are 90. Now we get a mole. Now we have to figure out how do we take it back to the US. Is it check or carry on? Because is it considered liquid? And then lastly, how do we cook it? Well, we will show you. We don't make our mole in this video, but let us know in the comments if you're interested in a video on that. The red mole was pricier because it includes a scarcer type of chile that is mostly only grown in Oaxaca. Mole paste is in fact considered a liquid. So if you get one of these packages, make sure to put it in your checked luggage. How long does mole paste last? How many? Uh... So if it's in the freezer a year, if it's in the refrigerator six months. Okay, see, see. yeah. Eating isn't the only thing you can do in Oaxaca City. There are plenty of other things to do. Take a look at what else we did in the city in this video. Right now, we're about to embark on a road trip down through the mountains, and we're going to see some charming towns along the way. And eventually, we're going to reach the Oaxacan coast. So if you have any interest in learning more about Oaxaca, please hit the subscribe button and like this video to help others find it.